Good morning. My name is Christine Ariel. I will be your worship partner today. And I want to welcome, welcome you to Westminster Unitarian Church and here in Smith Hall. Our chalice lighting marks the beginning of our worship service. I will light ours and share our reading. Then if you are online, I invite you to light yours if you have one. And if you'd like, you can use the chat to post the name of the street name where that chalice was lit. To face the world's shadows, a chalice of light. To face the world's coldness, a chalice of warmth. To face the world's terrors, a chalice of courage. To face the world's turmoil, a chalice of peace. May its glow fill our spirits, our hearts, and our lives. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see your faces or most of your faces this morning. Uh, new faces and familiar faces. Really, really pleased to be with you all today and with all of you online as well, whose whole faces I can see when I have my computer set up that way. So today, Oh, and who am I? My name is Ellen Quadgrass. I am the minister here at Westminster. And today we continue our theme for October of cultivating relationship. That is something that requires some spaciousness to do, some time, some room. In order to notice and pay attention to each other, we need to slow down. We need some slack in our lives. As it happens, Reverend Darcy Baxter preached a sermon over the summer called, quote, do nothing on exactly this theme of creating space. She generously offered it as a sermon that ministers could use if they were feeling overwhelmed by all the extra work created by the pandemic or just needed a break. And the message of the sermon itself is for anyone who has too much to do or is just feeling overwhelmed and needs a break or who may need some encouragement to create some space to cultivate relationships. So today, I want to share the gift she gave to me and to my colleagues with all of you here. Let us move deeper into worship with these words by Reverend Sarah Lawal, based on that same theme. We gather together in this time of continued uncertainty, wondering when will a new day come? We go about our lives fighting the ticking clock of demands that fill up our days, wondering, did we ever truly slow down? We seek out community to anchor ourselves in the love and care we know is out there, even if we cannot truly touch it. We welcome the connection and the spaciousness to ponder the big questions and ordinary moments. Some time to consider how to do nothing while holding all the weight of all the somethings. In this broken and hurting world, we give ourselves this gift, this hour of reflection and restoration 
this hour to do nothing, to listen to what is actually there, to contemplate and love the whole of what is, and then reemerge more whole and holy than before. Let us worship together. And we will begin with our opening hymn. Here we have gathered. If you are in person, we are not yet singing inside. So I do invite you to stand and sway or hum if you like. And if you are at home, of course, please feel free to sing right out loud. Please rise in body or in spirit. Please remain standing as we say together our unison affirmation, which is found in your order of service. Love is the spirit of this church and service is our mission. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. Please be seated. Here in this community, one of the ways we help one another is by listening to one another, witnessing to one another, and celebrating with one another in whatever joys or concerns we hold in our hearts. And so for those of you who are online, I invite you in a moment to share your joys or sorrows in the chat. And I will read those from uh, folks who are here in person. As Let us light one final candle. Esteem for all those joys and sorrows too deep for words that we hold in this space and this space. Let us gather our hearts and minds in a spirit of prayer or meditation. In this precious moment, know only that you are loved and that you are safe and whole and loved. Know that you belong here among us upon this earth, here in your body, however tired, here with your heart, however broken, here with all that is beautiful and with all that is painful with whatever joy or disappointment you may carry. Know that you are not alone. Feel the presence of others 
surrounding you, breathing beside you here in the room or breathing in other spaces around the state or around the world online. We discover the way our voices rise and fall together in harmony and hope. Here we claim a resilient freedom, the choice for love, for light, the choice to live with joy and gratitude and praise as one form of resistance and a reclaiming of how our lives can be. Let us join in humming or singing our song in response, voice still and small. Please remain seated as we join in this song and response. Here at Westminster, we share our offering every month with a different organization that shares our values or our mission. This month, we share half our undesignated offering with our very own sharing locker. We reach out to anyone in Washington, Kent County, and Cranston residents who need assistance by offering household goods, a seasonal farmer's market, and or pet food. The other half of the offering goes to support all the other good work of this community. You can donate using the link that is now being posted in the chat. If you are here in person, we ask that you use your cell phone to click on the donate button on the Westminster website, or you can leave your offering in the box on the table after the service. The offering will now be given and received with gratitude. Our reading this morning is by Wendell Berry. I go among trees and sit still. 
all my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I left them, asleep like cattle. Then when I have what I am afraid of comes, I live for a while in its sight. What I fear in it leaves it, and the fear of it leaves me. It sings and I hear its song. The international accounting and consulting firm Deloitte is a company that provides professional services to corporations. These services include accounting, audit, management, consulting, financial advising, risk analysis, tax services, and legal services. Of the four major international firms that provide such services, Deloitte is the largest in terms of revenue and number of employees. Not only is Deloitte a multinational corporation, it also provides the services that enable other companies to be multinational corporations. Efficiency, productivity, and profitability are the pillars of their industry. Efficiency, productivity, and profitability. In 2008, Pilvi Takala got a job as a trainee at Deloitte's Helsinki office. Very quickly, her employers noticed odd behavior that deeply troubled them in the midst of this bustling work environment, often Takala could be found sitting motionless at an empty desk, just staring into space. When coworkers tried to engage her in polite conversation, she would reply that she was in the middle of doing a bit of brain work, or she would say she was working on her thesis. One day, she spent most of it riding up and down the elevators repeatedly. And when a coworker asked what she was doing, she replied, thinking again, it helps to see things from a different perspective. Her fellow employees grew increasingly uneasy. A string of urgent inter-office emails were sent out about this new trainee with her very short hair. It turns out that these employees had unwittingly taken part in a performance art piece called The Trainee. Hilvi Takala is a Finnish artist who is known for videos in which she quietly threatens social norms with simple actions. Now, there is nothing actually very unusual about the idea of not working while at work. People commonly look at social media on their phones, look up sports scores, or seek many other kinds of distractions during formal work hours. But the obviousness of Takala's utter inactivity, her non-productivity, it galled her colleagues. A writer said of Takala's art piece, the trainee, quote, appearing as if you're doing nothing is seen as a threat to the general working order of the company, creating a sense of the unknown. The potential of nothing is everything. This sermon is lifting up the gospel 
of doing nothing. And Darcy Baster has been preaching this gospel of doing nothing, she said, because of where we have been in this past year. Number one, the most obvious during the winter surge of the pandemic, our healthcare system and workers were on the verge of crisis. Too many people exhausted, stressed, sick, lonely and dead. And the work that was most essential is most essential to our survival. And the people who do that so-called essential work were the ones our society was most willing to sacrifice. As a society, we would rather let people die and suffer rather than have the government subsidize lost revenue and wages, rather than simply pay people to do nothing. Darcy Baxter has been preaching the gospel of doing nothing, she said, because in this neoliberal phase of capitalism in which we find ourselves, the economy depends on people living in a state of ongoing anxiety, envy, and dissatisfaction. Because that's when we buy stuff. Most of which, frankly, is unnecessary and produced in ways that contribute to climate change. And Darcy Baxter has been preaching this gospel of doing nothing, she said, because too many of us are overstimulated with addictive technologies that we use to connect with those we care about or to find out what's going on in the world. And instead of doing nothing, we are persistently lured instead to entertain and distract ourselves. And finally, Darcy Baxter has been preaching this gospel of doing nothing, she said, because our current economic system is destroying the very earth on which our survival depends, condemning the lives of millions of today's children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren to profound suffering. The profit earned today comes at the expense of our future, and our loved ones who will be living in that future. Destructive, poisoning, life-threatening productivity is more valued than sustaining, nurturing nothingness. Unused hospital beds were, in the judgment of hospital executives in the last 20 years or so, those unused hospital beds were deemed to be doing nothing. And during the winter surge on the news, you would hear about how there were not enough hospital beds. You would have likely heard about how our medical system was on the verge of crisis and that healthcare workers were burning out. What was often not mentioned in these stories was that for at least 20 years, hospital executives had been persistently figuring out how to make hospital care more profitable. They had trimmed and trimmed and trimmed, making our healthcare system very efficient. One nurse interviewed talked about how over the past 10 years or so, her job description had expanded where, she, where there had been three people to do tasks, they were now just assigned to her. And while perhaps that was manageable in a non-crisis time, what has been considered efficiency created a healthcare system without the capacity to deal with crisis. Empty hospital beds had supposedly been doing nothing. Nurses had too much downtime, time that could 
be used for more somethings. And so we got rid of that perceived inefficiency, all that supposed nothingness. But we have learned in this past year, painfully learned what that nothingness had been doing. That nothingness was in fact somethingness. That nothingness was the capacity to take care. That nothingness was the community's ability to handle crisis and still take care of its people. The potential of nothing is everything. The fourth century Chinese philosopher Long Tzu wrote a parable entitled, The Useless Tree. The story is about a carpenter who sees a tree of impressive size and age, but with gnarled branches. The carpenter passes by declaring it as a worthless tree. Soon afterward, that tree comes to the carpenter in a dream and asks, are you comparing me with those useful trees? The tree points out to the carpenter that the fruit trees and timber trees are regularly ravaged. Meanwhile, uselessness has been this tree's survival strategy. The tree says, Uselessness, uselessness has been of some use to me, for would I ever have grown this large? And there is a real life useless tree, turns out, the last old growth redwood left in Oakland, California. It's called grandfather or old survivor. It is a miraculous 500 year old holdover from the time before all the ancient redwoods were logged after the gold rush. Before 1969, most people believed that all of the old growth trees were gone. But then a naturalist stumbled on old survivor towering over other trees. Old survivor, old survivor is a useless tree. It sits on this steep, rocky slope that makes it very difficult to access. It has a twisted shape and its 93 foot height makes it a runt compared to those other old growth redwoods. But old survivor survived by appearing useless to loggers as timber. The nothingness described in this sermon is in fact somethingness. It only appears like nothingness in the, in the context of the late stage neoliberal capitalism in which we are so immersed. Jenny Odell writes in her book, How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy. I wanna be clear that I'm not actually encouraging anyone to stop doing things completely. In fact, I think doing nothing in the sense of refusing productivity and stopping to listen entails an active process of listening that seeks out the effects of racial, environmental, and economic injustice and brings about real change. I consider doing nothing, she writes, both as a kind of deprogramming device and as sustenance for those feeling too dissembled to act meaningfully. On this level, the practice of doing nothing has several tools to offer us. The first tool has to do with repair, Odell writes. 
in such times as these having recourse to periods of and spaces for doing nothing is of utmost importance because without them, we have no way to think, reflect, heal, and sustain ourselves individually or collectively. There's a kind of doing nothing that is necessary for, at the end of the day, doing something. The second tool that doing nothing offers us is a sharpened ability to listen. To do nothing, is to hold yourself still so that you can perceive what is actually there. And the third tool of doing nothing offers us an antidote to the rhetoric of growth. In the context of health and ecology, things that grow unchecked are often considered parasitic or cancerous. Yet we inhabit a culture that privileges novelty and growth over the cyclical and regenerative. Our very idea of productivity is premised on the idea of producing something new all the time, whereas we do not tend to see maintenance and care as productive in the same way." End quote. Doing nothing is necessary for doing something truly meaningful. Doing nothing sharpens our ability to listen and perceive what is actually there. Doing nothing is an antidote to the cancerous parasitic paradigm of novelty and growth. The potential of nothing is everything. What I love about congregational life, Darcy concludes, and I agree, is that as I understand it, our job is nothingness. What if church functioned like Pivla Takala in her Deloitte office, like the empty hospital beds in crisis times, or like the useless tree? as we slowly emerge into these post-pandemic times, when there is an opportunity to shift and change what was so wrong before. Please, friends, let us not forget to do nothing. Amen. Let us join together for our final hymn, Wake Now My Senses. Please rise in body or in spirit and let us hum together in the room or sing together if you're online. In this broken and hurting world, 
May we give ourselves the gift of reflection and restoration that comes when we do nothing. May we listen in that spaciousness to what is actually there. Contemplate and love the whole of what is, and then reemerge more connected, more whole, and more holy than before. And let us hum our Carry the Flame or sing it. Amen. Go in peace, but stay for the congregational meeting, which will happen in about 15 minutes. I